Hey everyone, welcome to the second episode of the React Intermediate series. In this episode right here, I'm going to show you guys how to clone the uh, React, uh, sorry, the Fronto template project and put it inside of your Rails app. Uh, so if you're using some other framework, uh, I'm sure there are conventions. So basically, um, it really depends, you know, what you're using. Uh, you know, I've, I've used this way with Elixir as well, in, uh, with Phoenix, and I just followed their convention. Elixir makes it, uh, Phoenix makes it very easy because they just have an assets folder. So I just, you know, clone everything into the assets folder and I'm done. So um, basically, if you look at our invoiced Rails app, um, you know, ultimately it doesn't matter anyway what the backend is. Essentially, you just want a folder. You could just even have a directory in here called front end or fronto or web and then just put everything in there and then configure your build accordingly. I'm going to show you guys with Rails. Um, you know, after all, this is a, a full stack app with front end and a back end. Uh, although the, the Rails part will be continuing in the Rails API series, but the React part, you know, we want to mount it inside of the Rails app. So essentially, the way I created this app was, you know, it didn't have an assets folder, um, you know, and the reason why is because we're gonna we're gonna manage our own assets using Fronto uh, template. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start off by creating the assets directory, and basically this kind of like you know uh, goes with the convention. However, you if you have a Rails app already and it has an assets directory and you you already have files in there that are, that is being used inside of your application views. Uh, and you don't want to mess with it, you can always put it under the lib uh, assets directory, or you can call it something else. As I mentioned, it doesn't matter, but I just want to stick with the convention. So I'm going to go into the assets directory and then essentially, um, uh, actually, let me go ahead and delete this. What I really want to do is uh, I want to open up the console here. And once I'm in the app directory over here, you can see, I want to just clone the template uh, as uh, you know the as the 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 assets directory. So I'm going to go to GitHub, Fronto.js template, and I'm going to copy that over there. All right, so what you want to do is do a git clone. However, we're going to remove the .git directory inside. So git clone depth equals one uh, assets. So now this is going to create the assets directory uh, in our project. So, you know, later on, as I develop this, uh, I'm going to create CLI tools where it's going to detect that it's a Rails app or like a, a Rails gem that integrates. So you do like a uh, install the gem and then basically um, you do a, inst a Rails uh, G install or a rake install or something, and it'll basically set this up for you. But for now, you know, this is painless enough. Uh, so I want to go into the assets and rmrf uh, dot git. All right, so uh, let me go out of this directory. And now we have the assets directory, so we can do git add. clone template into our app as assets get push origin develop so basically I'm going to push this up uh, so that you know we have the assets in here already uh, so the way that this is going to work is now we have the assets directory we can basically run you know this exists in itself like this is completely isolated from the rest of the app like the rest of the rails app is not even aware of this directory um so you know as i mentioned like if you have if you uh, you need to use assets pipeline um you know you might not be able to put it in here uh but since i didn't when i booted this app when i started this app i made it api only without sprockets without assets i can use assets directory here okay so uh how do we do development when we are running, uh, you know, the, the Rails app is separate. So it's the same as before. Uh, so I'm going to head over into here. I'm going to run Rails S. And what I usually do is I split the uh, console like this. And uh, what I will do is I will then go into dev code me and uh, invoiced. And then essentially just go into a uh, app assets, yarn run dev. 
whoops, yarn install, yarn run dev. And basically, you know, that pretty much takes care of, uh, you know, the whole setup for you. So basically now uh, I can go into my local host 8080 and I will be able to see my front end basically. Um, so now how does this work with the Rails app? So I'm going to show you guys exactly how um, we can basically set up the development. Like we're going to do a little bit of configuration in development in order to, uh, sorry, in the, in the development file over here uh, to get it proxying correctly. So this is where our next focus is going to be. All right, uh, so essentially the idea behind the proxy is we're gonna set a path that we that we wanna basically forward any kind of traffic uh, to the Rails app. And then basically this will kind of like take care of everything for us in terms of development purposes. So uh, essentially you when you access, when you boot your Rails app, you have one your Rails app on here, you won't interface with your Rails app uh, directly uh, because the Rails app serves as just a backend. So the proxy settings in the Webpack dev server, you know, helps us do that very, very easily. All right, so this is just to get the project set up. I uh, hope you guys uh, did that without any real issues. Uh, we're going to wrap up on this episode, and what we're going to be doing is in the next episode, we're going to be setting up this proxy, and I'm going to explain to you guys how we're going to test it out and all that stuff. We're just going to do like a simple, uh, basic test, uh, essentially. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I will see you guys in the next episode. Also, don't forget to subscribe, share the, this video with your friends and family if you found it useful, uh, and also leave any feedback uh, in the comments section in YouTube. Um, and also, I want to mention we have a new site coming up, and uh, yeah, you get a taste of what's possible with this uh, template. So very excited to bring this to you guys. See you guys in the next episode.